okay. Uh, but just go turn the screen share off for 30 seconds and I'll be with you. Hang on. Just going to grab one final thing. Right, let's get going. Okay, um, normally <clears throat> with what well, I say normally, the whole point about the data, trading the sort of a volume day like data is you look for the initial direction and then you trade the pullback so you, don't, you wait for the pullback, sorry, and then you trade it in the initial direction. So of course that could be the other way around. It could be you get a short, you get a retracement, and then you get the move. Now, the, the crux of this is where do you enter? How do you know when is the best spot to enter? And normally, uh, normally it's you get a quite often get a hundred percent retracement but you can get as little as 50 percent so if it's a very severe move generally speaking the bigger the, the initial range so this i would say if this is normally more than 100 pips then you're probably looking at a 50 to 60 percent retracement if it's um less than 100 pips it's normally a, um, it's more than likely a 100% retracement. Okay, so 50 to 60% if it's greater than 100 pips. And um, a total retracement if it's more so. In this example here, We'll, we'll look at exactly what happened today in the Dow uh, with the US GDP. So here we had a spike to the upside. So that's the direction. That's wave one is direction. Wave two is retracement. And then in this case, it's done 100% retracement. And then wave three is the move. Uh, you can see from these bars, it was a it was a violent push higher. But took uh, that looks as if that's taken a good hour to get back, and then it takes a good two three hours to push up. Okay, so let's have a look at what happened today on the Dow. And you will see this is a two minute chart. And at 1.30, we had a push to the downside uh, within about six to eight minutes, we had a retracement. And then we had a final move down. So not, it, it, this is a, unusually small move not a lot of pips involved in it so if i look at the actual total range so this is the initial bar we're only just back up there now i have just taken all this time to to retrace so what are we looking at we're looking at 40 pips wow that's that's pathetic really um symptomatic of a uh holiday well, the day before um, a public holiday. 
So that, there's your 50%. That's roughly eyeballing it. That's a half halfway mark. So not a lot of money in this, but if you took it at 125, you actually end up retracing back to the initial um, low that we saw f still five minutes in, into the five minutes after the data announcement, we we saw 87, and that's pretty much what we saw um, into the open. So we just dipped under 87 into the open, got 87 was then 87 held, and then here we are up at 140. So not so very slow day. We've got the volume is really really pathetic but well, that's an example of so as i said in the initial um sort of introduction to this if the move is a quiet one then you're more likely to get um no i said actually more likely to get a total retracement we we did get a total retracement we're literally just bashing it up it up literally just pushing in there now but um, anyway uh, so let's look at some more examples. Like I said, the more, yeah, I said if it's less than 100 pips, you're more likely to get 100% retracement. The bigger the move, I said, if it's over 100 pips, you're likely to get 50%. It, it varies. This is the problem with trading data, it varies. And so if you're at all unsure, the best thing to do is just to back off and, and not trade it. Let me show you another example from the chart library. Uh, okay, this is this is a good example. Uh, we had this is another short. So we hit two thirty seven. This is a better range. It's still not that. Great. So initial move was down. So we finished lower. Then we pushed when we did a complete retracement and a little bit more. And then we saw that dip from 237 to 080. So a 160 pips. Okay, so one, two, three. So this is really kind of another one. Uh, we've had some more, we had a really interesting move on oil today. Let's look at oil. Here's oil on, we had oil in vents today. And this was, this was much, much better. Uh, the initial move was down. We then saw a retracement. So we broke above the range just temporarily and immediately closed lower, immediately. So if you left this one, actually range this support and resistance off, uh, this closes under the support here at you know, five, to eight, five to 10 minutes after the data and then we drop so if you shorted here, if you shorted at 58.20, had a stop above the high, which is not that big. You don't need a 30 pip stop. Um, the risk all ratio is pretty good because if that's your risk, uh, obviously we've got the benefit of hindsight, but uh, that was your reward. And you got the rewards just over an hour after. Yeah, actually, an hour. Bang on an hour. So the risk was, uh, what did I say? I think it's 30 pips. And your reward was 58.20. Uh, yeah, it's about two to one. You ended up with two to one. Two to one is not bad. So we look as if we could retrace all the way up to 58.20 at the moment. 
So one, two, three. So it's a so the important thing is just to look for direction. Look for direction. Wait for the pullback. Now you could have shorted up here. You could have shorted at um, 58.42 with a stop. Well, I would have, if you had a 20 pip range here and you got short at the high, if you gave that a 20 pip stop from that resistance, that would have kept you well and truly out of trouble and would have got you into a... Uh, but close to a hundred pit move. If you have got in on the on the start of wave three, but uh, if you wait for confirmation uh, after, it actually looked quite you know closed quite bullish up there. But if you trust the three way move, if you get used to trading the three way move, then that is potentially a good place to to trade it. Okay, so uh, what else have we had? Uh, let's have a look at, we had some Dow, sorry, DAX data today as well. Uh, the DAX data was, uh, the DAX data was seven o'clock, wasn't it? Let me just double check that. Yes, it was 7 a.m. So initial move on the DAX data was just kept climbing up. Did ultimately drop. Uh, are you having trouble logging in, guys? Are you having trouble hearing me or something? uh and then ultimately we we just well spent a lot large part of the day just winding around this range really so if you just range that seven o'clock bar let's go to a five minute chart that, that, that'll make life easier a lot easier uh so there is the let's just tidy this up so look at the seven o'clock bar. So the DAX opens at 7 a.m. But the spreads are higher at 7 a.m. That's why it's actually better to trade it at um, 8 a.m. So we get a one, two, three wave move. And we're just pivoting right around the 7 a.m. bar. And you will note that if I zone that, you can see that once we come out of this and we enter the, um, or we get to into the US open. So this is uh, nine o'clock in the US here. That's nine o'clock in the US. And we sit right on this 267, 7 a.m. support. So it doesn't give you many pips. Uh, let me see. see, 267 gives you uh, 30, 30 odd pips. Wow. Well, it is a holiday day today. Um, it's a quiet part of the week with the US off tomorrow. Uh, but we have got a decent push up here. Um, just for your information, this dotted line is uh, the cash close, the nine o'clock cash close. So what the US market has done is pivoted around. So we, we dropped, pushed up, dropped back into the zone uh, and ultimately we picked up from this 120 and here we are again, not very many pips up. 
uh, volumes are very light. But uh, that, but there is something to be made. So now, now this 140 was resistance. So that's potentially uh, support. So that's viable now. Let me just stop the share for a minute. I just want to get a couple of other slot, other examples to show you. I'll be back with you in a minute. Just want to find some better examples. Let me look at uh, a recent uh, this is the one I'll, this is the one I want to show you. Yeah, this is this is a great one. Right, let's, let's let me show you. Now this is an example uh, for those of you who missed it. This uh, I said if the initial move is over hundred pips then you're likely to get a shallower pullback. This is, um, this is 170 pip range. This is the Dow on non-farm payroll on US jobs on the 4th of October. And if you fib that range, you will note this dotted line is 50%. So if, so, the whole point of this setup is that you don't need to get in front of, you don't need to anticipate and guess what the move is. Stand aside, uh, don't trade prior to the data announcement, and then uh, measure it, line it up. So here we have, so we initially top out at 307. Uh, it takes about two, four, six, takes a, about half an hour to pull back to the 50 to the 220 and then here you can see we go from 220 to 415 so I fit the range it's done a 50% retracement there's the 50% and it's gone to 161 plus 161 percent of the move and then guess what uh, later afternoon it pulls back to 307 and then runs to 450 so you get at least you get two, there's two decent trades there there's trade number one on a 50 percent exit for uh two just under 200 pips about 195 Trade number one gives you 195 pips. Trade number two gives you at least 150. And you didn't have to get, you didn't have to risk anything uh, in the initial violent move. So this is a lot, a lot of nothing, isn't it, in the run up. So all the, all through the prior um, trading, there's nothing to trade in there, nothing at all. It was moving in the 50 pip range here, and you get suddenly get 170 pip range, pull back. So nothing here, a lot of, lot of nothing. Zooms up, be patient, wait for the pullback. There's your entry, there's your stop. You could have gone in there with a 20 pip stop. Uh, so you get. 195 pullback 150 so you get a one two three four five so that's if you are an Elliott wave fan that is a complete five wave move if you don't if you're not aware of Elliott wave I thoroughly recommend you go and study it because that is an absolute picture perfect uh, Elliott wave move Mr. Uh, I think it's Robert Elliott is a, um, a great man. Even though that this was this trade setup was originally from the 30s, it's still very very applicable. Any questions? So you can see, I keep a very good. Uh, 
um, chart library. Right, okay, so what do we what do we have here? Hang on. I know I know what I've done here. Um, yeah, this is press conference was here. So not no real direction into um, in this announcement on the rate. This is a rate decision. Seven p.m. That was the rate decision. Actually, let me enlarge this. That's better. So initially, you get a one, two, three wave move initially. That's probably worth about 100 pips. I think the third wave was probably 100 pips. Don't quite come back to the low here. This was the bar that you, press conference opens at seven. So I do like to range the, the initial um, bar from that. So this is in a slightly unusual situation. So they, it comes, it drops, comes back, just peaks above the, the low of the data range, and then drops hard. You get a lower close and it just drops hard. So this is a slightly more unusual one. All I would say is that once it drops out of this initial um, 735 range, you get a one, two, three wave move. So you get a one, two, three wave move to the upside, and you get a one, two, three wave move to the downside. So this is an unusual one. What you could have done to try and simplify this is, uh, where's my straight line out? There we go. Um, Ranged off, uh, I'm to do it a bit lower actually. See if I can move, move that lower. Or well, ranged off the high and the low of that first five minute, five minute bar. So you get two pieces of evidence that suggest this, this isn't going to hold. Uh, you close underneath it here. So the pullback to the back to that so if you break underneath pull back you can short uh, and then you get an so it doesn't it does short but then pops right back in you get a second confirmation here and then there you get uh, that must be a good 200 pip drop there so that was definitely tricky that was definitely tricky and you're talking about this must have been into the I think that was into the close I'm guessing that's about between eight and nine o'clock there so if you did get involved in this and got stopped out, you could have come back in the, into the last hour to check what that was going to do. Let me find another one. No, that's not, no, that's... Do, do, do. Let me just find. Oh, we just done that one. Okay. All right, where are we? Just on half past. So, I think my my, my message to you is: if you are going to, the key message is. Um, don't engage. I suggest you don't engage the market. In, in the initial um, period, just wait and see what you get as a result. Wait and see what the outcome is. Wait and see where the first range is. And then uh, see, if, see where it's going. And this is 50% into this, quite a decent seller's bar. So the, the the probability that that was going to drop was pretty good, not great. Uh, if you give, if you, we use an anchor chart system, 
And the anchor chart system was uh, suggesting that um, this pivot down here could, could hold. So yeah, that, that's how we handle data. So the main items of data is, of course, non-farm payroll the first Friday in the month is one of the best times to trade. Um, Fed rate decisions are good. You also, you do get, <coughs> excuse me, you do get similar moves on Fed minutes. So I think it's, I think Fed minutes are a week or two after the Fed rate decision. Look, look out on the, on your calendar. You do get three-way moves coming up for that. Uh, we've actually got Beige Book at seven o'clock. Beige Book is generally doesn't have much impact on the markets, but I think that the markets might um, just back off until we get that seven o'clock day trade of the way. And I like to trade the last hour as well. So that's why I'm happy just to sit here and just wait for this market to um, give me the price that I want. And then I can trade the last hour. I did, let me show you what I did yesterday. Got a slide here. I've got a screenshot of last night's trade. Where are we? Here we are. So this is, I traded the last hour last night. And so I said, I oh, can just about see it. Dow long at 95, it actually dipped about into 88. So it didn't, so it took very, very little heat. I've, I've not, no, I have to, um, so my target here was I actually did go a lot, did go about 30 pips higher than this, but that, that doesn't matter. I did this screenshot just while I had three contracts open. At the time I took the screenshot, I had £443 profit. There was my target, just under the 100 at 518. So I took 518 profit and uh, I had a 73. I think my stop had already been moved up to cover my entry and spread. So I called it in the, in the alert room. And um, so I did £518 in the last half an hour of the session. So I made 518 pounds in half an hour, not bad. This is just one trade. I was trading uh, gas and beans as well yesterday. And I did a couple of other trades on the Dow earlier in the day. So if you want to, if you're interested in, we did trade the data today as well. But if you are interested in getting involved in our live trading room, then come along to this website I'm just about to show you now. Come along to scalperschool.co.uk. I'll just put that in the chat room. And you can see that further down here is the actual program for Scalper School. So it's a four hour Saturday morning program. The next one is this Saturday. And we have, we teach, we teach various modules, including how to trade the open. The golden anchor system, which is an absolute gem. The golden anchor, most of the, the good moves today have come off the golden anchor system. We have a gap strategies that include different types of gaps and uh, they are a very very important factor and we do simulated trading we do um, we have a rules system so you get a set of rules once you once you come out of the program and then you are once you come out of the program you enter our live trading room you've got access to our live trading room and the alert system so if you're interested in that the next one is the 30th here is the paypal button use use the top PayPal button. The second one is for dollars. Um, sign up. I can grab your details from the PayPal. And if you want to see the sort of money I make, uh, I, 
posted some some modest 538 that day uh 500 that day and so on oh only 187 that day there's a some yeah i get some bigger days anyway uh cl is the oil futures ym is the dow futures but well, there's a 1500 day so the markets have, have been quite fairly range bound not, not that many breakouts recently so we trade oil and uh the indices dow and dax i don't like the FTSE very much don't often trade that i don't find it there's not a lot of volatility in the uh FTSE. trade the gas we're just sort of coming out of the main season of gas. I am long this gas. If you look at the daily chart, this is how I mapped out my daily chart. And you can see that uh, the, what we've got, the reason why I like the gas in this time of year is because we've got a very nice support level here. So we get a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So I like the gas because we completed a five and three way move. Now, once you complete a five and three way move, uh, for those of you not familiar with Elliott Wave, what can you expect next? What you can expect next is another five and three way move. So what you would ordinarily do is move this fib level from here to the end of what we call the C wave. And then in theory, this could do another five and three wave up to, uh, I'm looking for 30, 30 bucks to see if we can come up to that 30 level. Okay, so although we are day trading and, and scalping, we are very, very tuned into the daily charts. And there are of course cases where it can be worth um, sitting in an overnight trade. In fact, we sat in an overnight trade on this one yesterday and woke up to quite, quite a decent move. So into the Euro session this morning, so from this buy signal down here, we moved up into that area there um, and in, Gas futures terms, that's quite a lot of money. The spreads are quite good on gas in um, the retail broker accounts. So that looks as if this could, this is a good price cluster down here. So we look, we've got gas invents tomorrow. So we could be getting ready set for a decent move. So one, two, three wave could potentially take us up into uh, a decent move right my throat so i'm losing my voice a bit here i've forgotten to take have a drink <coughs> i apologize any questions so the live trading room is four sessions a week and the alert room is um it concentrates on the euro session so I'm sending out alerts during the Euro session. Trading live in the room from Tuesday to Friday, Dow open. And, uh, and then we're trading a range of key volatile markets. We don't look at Forex very much because there's not a lot of vol not nowhere near the same volatility in Forex. Um, there's a couple of decent moves in there. But I personally think that that, th that 30 wave trend is potentially better. Anyway, it, it varies. You know, the, the Dow can go into some uh, tight ranges and lose its volatility. But uh, having thrown that, um, that is more volatile than it has been. At times, the pound's been very flat, but at least we are getting a lot more volatility now with all the politics that's going on. Right, so I'm going to sign off now, but unless you've got any questions for me,
if you want to get involved in the live training room and the, and the scalper school members training room then drop me a line or if you want to talk about it let me know uh, if you want you can even turn your mics on now if you want to ask me anything You've all been very quiet, so I guess you're all okay with what I've talked about. All right, no questions at all. All right, so I'll leave it there. And I there will be some live, uh, some venues in January, February next year, kicking off some, um, I'll carry on with the online, Wednesday sessions as well, but there will be some venues for us all to meet up and uh, talk about day trading. Okay, I'm going to sign off. So thanks very much for joining me. I do hope you will come back and um, watch out for the next Wednesday program. Drop me a line. You can email me from the website or call me. Otherwise, um, have a good evening and see you next week, hopefully. Bye for now.